So the other um, study I want to tell you about is um, uh, another study we looked at for the VLDL lipoproteins, which are these remnant particles. So talking about the cholesterol, you said when you eat, well, when we do eat a f like a meal, um, the, um, uh, the f you know, the fatty acids uh, get incorporated into what we call um, chylomicron um, particles, which are these big um, particles that carry a lot of lipid and also cholesterol. Um, and then these um, big particles actually get broken down into smaller and smaller pieces. Eventually, um, they, they get called chylomicron remnants, and then also from the liver, they get excreted as VLDL and then VLDL remnants. So these are these bigger particles um, that are different from LDL eventually down the road they can become LDL these particles but um, at the earlier stage they're still called VLDL or chylomicron remnants there's been a lot of interest recently in the role of these particles um, in cardiovascular disease because we've noticed that in some patients who have these elevated remnants even though their LDL cholesterol may be low um, but they're actually at increased risk um, and then there's been controversy because some patients actually um, may not be at increased risk. So it's trying to identify which individuals who have these, you know, bigger LDL or VLDL or chylomicron remnants that are at increased risk. And so in the Jupiter trial, um, uh, we looked at, you know, um, these lipoprotein measures in more detail, and we assayed them with um, nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, which can actually detect these larger lipid particles pretty well. And what we found was that, uh, very interesting, that there's really a difference as to which of these particles um, you have that relates to cardiovascular risk. We found individuals in particular who have a lot of the small VLDL remnants, um, these are the ones who had increased risk. Um, interestingly, um, the bigger ones that are more cholesterol rich uh, did not, um, you know, increase risk as much. It was really the small ones. It was very interesting because in Jupiter, again, we had people who were on a statin, and those individuals who um, went on a statin and who, um, after being on the statin, their VLDL, the small ones, increased. They were also at increased risk. I think this is really what is needed, is to identify tar um, uh, medications or agents that can target specifically that type of lipoprotein particle. Um, we know that actually PCSK9 inhibitors that were just mentioned and, um, and statins also reduce um, VLDL and chylomicron remnants, but they have differential effects on the types of particles. And like, for example, statins tend to reduce um, the larger particles more so than the small ones. They have very variable effects on the VLDL and chylomicron remnants. Um, and PCSK9 inhibitors, we need to learn more, but they do also reduce VLDL and remnants, um, and uh, you know more needs to be examined because our data suggests um, that these very small VLDL particles are what's really atherogenic. We found this very interesting finding. We wanted to go see, does it also um, you know, replicate in another study, another population? Um, and in fact, it did. We collaborated with our collaborators at Duke in the cath gen uh, study. And these are individuals who had a cardiac cath for whatever reason, like they had, um, you know, their physician referred them, they got a cardiac cath. And we also had measured NMR spectroscopy, these VLDL particles. And very interesting, exactly what we found in Jupiter also, when we identified the, the subset in the cath gen that met the Jupiter trial criteria, they also had very increased risk with these small VLDL remnants. So really um, confirming that there's really a biologic role for these for increasing risk and we need to identify ways to reduce them. What we're learning is it's not just, um, you know, black or white. It's really a lot of gray. Um, and the, um, and that helps us, right? Because if you just think the world is black and white, well, you know, then you're, you have a more simplistic view of the world and it's very hard to really identify what's really, you know, how to really have a solution. But when you identify that there are these differences, you know, maybe not all the HDL is actually protective, you know, it matters how you result in that particular profile that is protective. We've learned a lot actually in the past decade that um, not just for HDL, but even for LDL, that it really matters how you address um, the, the biologic abnormality or the biologic issue at hand and not so much just like a big tar you know big blanket approach of saying well let's you know um, do this in everyone but it also reminds us also that how important is um, you know not just drug therapeutics but lifestyle because with lifestyle we can really affect these particles quite a bit and lipoproteins are very sensitive to what we eat the diet the exercise you know, smoking um, so these are all really very important determinants and it just reminds us that there are many ways to address these and we just have to identify what works and what patient um, overall.